Good morning, it is Jane. It's a cloudy day here. You're probably going to see this in the afternoon. I don't know if I'll be able to get it up by morning, but it's just been an interesting weekend. Just lovely. Um, I got up and walked. I put some laundry in the dryer and was taking it from the dryer to hang it into the master bedroom in the closet and apparently I have a leak. So I'm like, yippee, what else can happen? So <laughs> trying to figure out where the source of the leak is, I have a call out to a couple plumbers to see if I can get someone to come and find the leak and, you know, fix it, do whatever. So that's um, interesting. Um, I did go look and I'd started to look at the comments and I noticed, boy, the trolls are out. So, um, pray for the trolls that they find another avenue to attack people. Um, you know, that they'll learn from their mistakes to stop that. Um, but as for me, I just leave those comments up and then I go and report it to YouTube and let them do whatever they're going to do or not do. Really don't care. But, you know, I just find it rather interesting that people think that they have to be so negative towards people. So, yeah, that's been interesting to see that this weekend. Um, the only other thing that I have, this is the only thing that I have been working on, and I have not gotten all that far on it. And I need to find a stitch marker to keep track of where I'm at. Where's my hook? I have no clue where my hook is. Oh, there it is down in the bottom. Um, anyway, this is that Romance Ripple, and I am going to leave a copy, um, a link to the pattern down below. It is a red heart pattern. Um, my first thought was it was available on um, maybe Yarnspiration since they purchased Red Heart, um, or Coats and Clark, and um, it was not there. However, Purple Kitty has it on her website, so I'll leave the link down below for that. But this is that pattern. Um, I've done, I used a whole skein of that, um, I love this yarn in the color, this is the print, it was in the color Float Along. So I've used most of that skein. I have a couple small balls left of this and the float away. They're not big enough to do, they were not big enough to do another row. So um, I'll be winding those up at some later date. And then I've started another grouping of the off-white. Um, I did find another variegated skein of yarn that I'm going to add in. And it is the Liquid Teal by Red Heart. At some point, I'll be adding that in as well. But I think the next couple of um, blues that I'm going to use are just going to be some plain blues. And um, then I'll go back to a variegated and then the plain, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I'm having fun with this. I'm hoping that I will be able to make this big enough that it can go for sleep in heavenly peace. That's my goal. Um, but it may mean that I have to go into totes to actually do that. Um, I'm just going to use different shades of blue, different variegated that I find, and then that off-white um, by Stitch Studio that I have so much of, or gentle white. So um, that's that's it for um, what I'm working on. I am just working on that one thing. I thought about working on my, um, I think it's spring shawl that I had written the pattern for um, because I was trying to do that um, to make a sample and then to put a tutorial out for that. Just haven't gotten to it yet. And... Um, so I'm just trying to stick with this one and get it done is what I'm trying to do. And that, that of course, can sometimes be a little harrowing to do, to get it, you know, taken care of, that kind of thing. Um, 
Tunisian Tuesday. I don't know if I'll get to that. I'm working on that. Um, just things have been super busy here. You know, and when there's only me to be able to handle it, that uh, takes a lot of time away from crocheting or knitting or sewing, those kind of things. I have some project bags that I need to sew. I have a embroidery project for someone that I need to finish up for them. And um, just a couple of things like that, you know, to um, get moved and get taken care of. So, yeah, that's that's been interesting trying to get rid of trying to take care of trying to take care of those things, get rid of bamboo, all that nonsense that has to be done. I did tell you on Friday this I No, I don't think it. Yeah, I did tell you. I'm not sure if I did or not. The sleep study that um the unit didn't come by FedEx. Um they delivered it to the wrong house. However, it was delivered to one of my neighbors up the road, and um, she is out of town. Well, she was out of town this weekend. She's back today. But her sister-in-law was um, checking on the house, those kind of things. She found the package Saturday, brought it down to me Saturday. So I was able to do the sleep study and get it done. But I did find it rather interesting um, and I will tell you this, now, I wish I'd had my phone so I could have videotaped the cat's reaction. It's a unit that you put all across your forehead and then you have a nasal cannula that comes down into your nose and basically it's to see if you stop breathing because the test is for sleep apnea. Well, I'd done all that, got it on, and the cats were in the bathroom with me. And I turned around and looked at them. They both went. And they took off running. They were frightened to death by what was on my face. <laughs> so uh, that was one of those rather funny moments. You know, I was like, man, I wish I'd had a camera rolling, you know, to catch that. Now, the second night, they did give me a strange look when I put it on because I have to do a two-night study. But, uh. Second night, they were okay with it, and then this morning when I took it off, um, they were frightened by it when I took it off. They weren't sure of it. So that was kind of interesting to see their behavior and, and the way that they reacted. So, um, yeah, it was funny. And one of the things that confuses the heck out of me, this unit they sent, they sent along with it a charging cord in case it needed to be charged. However, the charging cord doesn't fit the unit. I mean, and I'm like, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to charge it when it doesn't fit the unit. But whatever. So um, I did find that funny. Had a little laugh about it. But uh, yeah, that's that's basically been it. Um, Not a whole lot to share. Um, my church this week had a their celebration of their 40th anniversary, and they planted tree in remembrance of all of those who had um, been a part of the church in the past. Um, and that was rather neat to do because they pre-planted partial planting of the tree, but then we filled in the rest of the... Um, the filling in by taking a shovel of dirt in in remembrance of a loved one to put there in it. So that was rather neat. And of course the whole weekend, you know, it was raining like crazy off and on. Um, Saturday night we had a picnic and that was followed by a variety show um, put on by some of the members of the church that have, have talent. I don't have that kind of talent. So, um, they sang, um, we had one gal, and she does a beautiful job because she does every year, normally she is a part of the um, King of Kings play production that's put on by another church in our local area, and she does interpretive ballet dance, and she did that a lot to part of a song that her 
her brother and her mother were singing together. So that was really beautiful to see that. And um, a lot of funny skits, those kind of things. Um, we had the children of the church. Um, they'd gotten those together for a um, handbell session, and they played uh, God Bless America with handbells, and that was neat to see, and the kids did great. They did a beautiful job. And then um, there was one young lady. I think she's probably about 13, maybe 14. She had written a poem, and so she read her poem out loud, and that was was amazing. Her poem was amazing. She's got a lot of talent ahead of her. So um, it was just a fun evening. And then, of course, the that Sunday when we had planted the tree and everything, after we had planted the tree, came inside. They had been roasting a pig since Saturday night. So we had roasted pig, and, you know, a catering company came and did all the other things. Um, so it was it was a lot of fun. There were a lot of people there. It took about an hour and a half to get people all the way through the line so that they could get their first serving of food. And then, of course, there was so much of the pork left over that you could go up and, you know, take more. And they said you'd come up for seconds. Some of us, me, took home a plate for supper that night so I didn't have to worry about finding anything to eat or fixing anything. So it was a rather nice day. Um, it only sprinkled off and on. Um, we originally had planned to eat outside for the um, celebration, but because of the rain forecast, they brought in a bunch of tables, set up tables inside of um, our multi-purpose room. And um, it was nice to get to fellowship with some people. And I did meet a new young lady, sat down with her and met her. So that was nice, getting to know her. And uh, yeah, it was just a really beautiful weekend. So that took up a lot of my time for this weekend, too. All right. So let me get the Watt and Tarnation set up. And then we'll get into it. I know you're ready for it. I know I am. A couple of stories. Um, some of them are rather interesting. Some of them are like, eh, yeah, whatever. You know, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of people have asked me where I find a lot of these stories. Believe it or not, sometimes Facebook um, highlights them. I have people send me links um, for different stories that they've seen. Or if I hear something um, on TV, then I will say, hmm, let me go see if I can find that story. So that's how I find a lot of those links. And of course, you can always go to uh, Reuters and API um, and find stories that are breaking stories all day long. Um, and sometimes they have some of those stories, sometimes they don't. But... Um, that's how I find a lot of those crazy stories, is that way. So, you know, and I always like odd stories. That's one of my favorite things. And I always laugh because I always think that um, people don't understand how conspiracy theories get started. They get started very easily. Um, and generally they hold just a kernel of truth. And uh, that's what I find interesting is finding out what that truth is, you know, that either makes that conspiracy theory wrong or makes it right. Um, I don't know if you have seen the latest one with the, um, the whole thing with the uh, assassination attempt of Trump. Um, they're thinking that it's now an FBI cover-up. And basically that comes from the fact that the FBI cleaned up the crime scene, which they never do. That is always left to local people who have crime scene people to come and clean. They cleaned it up within, I think, 24 hours, and that's unusual. They released the site too soon. Um, they released the shooter's body for cremation, 
and they're not releasing a lot of the information. So those are things that get those conspiracy theories started. When you see those kind of things and it's unusual, and it may be perfectly something that they've decided to do because of the um, scope of what it is, where it was, but yeah, you have those kind of things going on. And that's where those things start. All right. Origins of Black Ring in the Sky over Virginia, a mystery. I don't know if you saw this story or not. Several Virginia residents captured video when a mysterious black ring was seen floating in the sky over the Williamsburg area. Multiple witnesses in the Hampton Roads region reported seeing the black ring in the sky shortly after 11 a.m. Tuesday, and multiple people captured photos and videos of the unusual phenomenon. The ring vanished within a few minutes. Seemingly similar black rings have been spotted in other locations in the past, with fires and explosions being cited as the likely cause. The James City County Fire Department said it is unaware of any reports of incidents that could have caused the ring at the time of the sightings. Ricky Matthews, a meteorologist for Wavy TV, said the cause was likely pyrotechnics or similar incident of concentrated fire causing the smoke ring to rise. Fellow meteorologist Steve Fundaro hypothesized it might have resulted from some kind of industrial process. But of course, they still don't know what caused it. Dog spooked by thunder runs 20 miles from home. Thunder with, thunder with animals is rather interesting. I know my cats, when there is thunder, Izzy will find one of her stuffed toys and she will meow until she finds me carrying that toy to me. Um, she does that every time it thunders. So I can understand how animals get spooked by it. Sometimes I get spooked by it. Animal rescuers in Ireland said a dog spooked by a thunderstorm ended up running 20 miles from home. The lad tram. Animal Welfare Center said on social media that rescuers responded to the report of a collie running loose in Tarman County, Liatrim. And they discovered the dog was wearing a collar and had a microchip. Center contacted the dog's owners and recovered the canine, discovered the canine had traveled more than 30, more than 30, more than 20 miles from Boyle County, Roscommon. The dog had fled from his home after being spooked by the thunder, his owner said. Thanks to his microchip, he is now safe and will be happily reunited with his family, officials wrote. This, and a lot of these, there are links, you know, as always, for these stories. Um, this next one, the video, is awful cute. Zoo's hidden camera nearly becomes a meal for the self selfie taking lion. The Oregon Zoo placed a hidden camera in its lion enclosure, but it didn't stay hidden for long and was soon recording footage of the inside of a big cat's mouth. The Portland Zoo posted a video to Facebook showing the fate that befell a hidden camera that was concealed in the lion enclosure in hopes of capturing candid moments. Camera was discovered by some selfie taking lions and was even carried across the enclosure by a lion that attempted to turn it into a meal, offering an up close look at the inside of its mouth. With the help of care staff, we hid a camera in the lion habitat last week. Didn't stay hidden for long, zoo officials wrote. And I'm sure no animal was harmed <laughs> in the retaking of the camera. California kayakers' great white shark encounter caught on camera. And that was an amazing video to watch. A pair of California kayakers were followed for several minutes by what appeared to be a 13 to 14 foot great white shark, and the encounter was caught on camera.
Ian Walters, a sixth grade science teacher from Oakland, said he and a friend were fishing from their kayaks in Half Moon Bay when he noticed the large fin sticking out of the water behind the other man's kayak. We watched it kind of go back around and start following me, Walters told KABC TV, and we just tried to keep each other calm and not give any reason for a reaction from the shark and just led it towards some seals and eventually. It let us go. Walter said the shark did not show any apparent signs of aggression. It's disconcerting because it's a new experience for me. Not so much that the shark was doing anything scary. He said the shark lost interest in the kayaks when its attention was grabbed by some nearby seals. Everyone grows up thinking the great white sharks are this mindless killing machine but they play this really important role and generally they don't have any interest in killing anyone other than seals or food they're eating. A no collar. Sorry about that folks, let me turn that off. Or fish Rarely seen deep sea fish is found off San Diego coast and scientists want to know why. A rarely seen deep sea fish resembling a serpent was found floating dead. On the ocean surface off the San Diego coast and was brought offshore for study, marine experts said. The silvery 12 foot long fish or fish was found last weekend by a group of snorkelers and kayaks in La Jolla Cove, north of downtown San Diego. The Scripps Institute of Oceanography said in a statement, it's only the 20th time an oarfish is known to have washed up in California since 1901, according to the institution fish expert Ben Frabel. Scripps noted that oarfish have a mythical reputation as predictors of natural disasters or earthquakes, although no correlation has been proven. Oarfish can grow longer than 20 feet and normally live in a deep part of the ocean called the Mesopelagic Zone, where light cannot reach, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Swimmers brought the, brought the La Jolla oarfish to shore atop a paddleboard, it was then transferred to the bed of a pickup truck. Scientists from NOAA, a Southwest Fisheries Science Center, and Scripps planned a necrop necropsy on Friday to determine the cause of death. And that is it. That, that was the biggest stories around. There were nothing else that I could find of interest. So there you have it. That is it for What in Tarnation. Let me get the... Um, and we'll get to that in a moment. Two Promises from God's Heart, the Devotion. Promises from God's heart for his presence in your life. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes watch. He examines everyone. Psalm 11, 4. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. James 4, 8. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Acts 17, 26 through 27. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them shout for joy forever. For you, Lord, bless the righteous one. You surround him with favor like a shield. Psalm 5, 11 through 12. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, 
nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 through 39. If you love me, you will keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. The world doesn't see him or know him, but you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. <clears throat> be in you. John 14, 15 through 17. His glory is great through your victory. You confer majesty and splendor on him. You give him blessings forever. You cheer him with joy in your presence. For the king relies on the Lord. Through the faithful love of the Most High, he is not shaken. Psalm 21, 5 through 7. Now, the yarn that um, is in that giveaway is still in here. Um, no one has claimed it yet. I am going to redraw and add this on at the end of the video. And um, I'm hoping that someone will claim it because after that, I'm thinking about just going into my subscribers list um, and determining how many num how many I have. I have 4,000 something and pulling a number and then contacting that person. Um, I don't know what else to do. I don't know why folks don't, uh, why folks enter a giveaway and then don't bother coming back um, to claim their prize. So yeah, after I draw this, the person will have exactly three days from today. Today is Monday. So if they have not contacted me by Wednesday evening, then I will draw a new winner that evening. Again, somehow, some way. So um, if you are the lucky winner, please contact me at scraptasticyarns at gmail.com with your information. I will ask you to go back and change your comment because it, there was a word you had to use in the comment. And um, I'll ask you to change your comment to make sure that it's you. And then I will get it sent off to you. So there you have it. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. The week. Well, not weekend. It's not the weekend. We're starting a new week. It's Monday. Goodness gracious. All right, everybody. Have a great week. And I will see you again soon. Bye. Well, here's hoping third time is the charm. I put the link in again, having to redraw again because someone didn't come forward. And um, let's get the comments. There are 45. So there are two more because I haven't closed this yet. All right, let's get the winner. He worked. Wow, what a wonderful collection of yarns. The harmony of the fall colors is beautiful. All right. Key Rort. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You have three days. You have until Wednesday to contact me with your information. I will ask you to go in and change your comment just slightly by adding a word or two to prove that it is you and then I will get your prize sent out to you. So again, congratulations. Let's hope the third time is a charm because otherwise I'm going to have to fix, find a new way to give away this yarn. All right. Um, you need to contact me at scraptasticyarns at gmail.com and um, the link is down below the video here. So please make sure that you do contact me with that information. All right. See you guys soon. Bye.